Hey guys, what's up? So we're on day six of the Mossy Oak Bowie Knife Test, and once again we are going to baton with it, whittle with it, or you know, make the tinder shavings. We're going to drop it, and you know what? Once again, I think we will throw it. So as usual, we are going to get some wood, and we're going to baton. Now I just got to find a good piece because a lot of my stuff has mostly been used up. You know what? I'm just going to throw this over here, make a nice pile. So next time, you know, we have a little campfire, it'll be ready. And I already have a ton of whittling over here from last time, and that's pretty nice. You want to hold on to that stuff, these will save you time within your next fire. Okay, so if any of you are joining my videos now, batoning is the act of splitting wood when you don't have an axe. So essentially you get a large fixed blade knife, preferably full tang. Full tang means the metal that is the blade runs all the way down in one solid piece into the handle. And this is really good for added strength and it will assist you in batoning because it is less likely that the blade will snap off. So we get that on there and what you do, you get another big stick, but here in my garage I have a rubber melt that we can just use. And we are going to, I'm, I'm just gonna place it out of view for a minute so I can uh, see if this will work and if it does, I'll move the camera back. So. Okay, so hopefully you guys can see what I'm doing here. So essentially you just, you uh, get the knife, you get something to hammer it with, and you can do this if you're out in the bush with a large stump or just anything really that's thick enough that will act as a hammer. And you just, like that. See, you just, uh, excuse me. You just run the knife in between the wood and now you have split the wood so that you have smaller pieces of firewood. All right, that's what the batoning is. And uh, now this is a test to see the durability of this knife and we are on day six. And I gotta tell you, it's getting pretty rough. The blade is chipped in a lot of places. It's rolled over in a lot of places. It's actually kind of starting to look like a, a hacksaw blade with all the little chips on it. I mean, not as much as a hacksaw blade, but you know what I'm talking about. You probably can't see it, but there are quite a few imperfections on the blade and the tip as you notice has broken off that's from a previous video when we uh, pried with it and I'm surprised it stood up a lot and it's getting rough in a lot of areas so just here and there the bolsters this brass piece it's not as smooth with the grip anymore uh, but it, it nothing is rattling on it yet nothing is uh, shaking on it yet so that's a good sign so um, we baton with it now we're gonna do some feather sticking also known as uh, tinder making or whittling. So let me just get a suitable stick, something like this. Okay, so what you do, you essentially, first we gotta get all this bark off. So see how I'm getting these shavings down there going, right? You want long strips of that because that's what will that's what will serve as your uh, your fire starter because it's thin enough and it's dry enough that it will catch very easily. And what you do with this, you place it at the base of your fire and then kind of build a loose structure on top of it in which the flames will build up to. Now this knife ain't too good at it. You want something more like a razor-edged buck to do this, but or Mora, those are really good. But as you see, we have got some nice tinder going there, that's nice. So I'm just gonna scrape that off and put it on my pile over here. Okay, so the whittling it ain't the best. It batons well enough. This is really a beater knife, it's a $34 knife. I really do think it was more of a wall hanger because um, due to the fancy appearance of it, uh, yeah, and, and I gotta tell you, the first time it chipped, it just chipped from me sharpening it. So, this is really more of a wall hanger knife, rather than something that I suggest you would rely on. I'd, if you have the money for it, get a K-bar or a buck knife. Something whose name carries quality and value with it, and has carried that value and quality through many years. Uh, but yeah, so, it, it whittled a bit, not very good, a baton. Now we are actually going to do a drop test with it. And the reason for this is, excuse me, the reason for this is, let's say you're hiking 
and your knife is in your sheath, but it's not done up properly. Let's say you bend over to reach down for something and you drop your knife. We're gonna see, will this break? Like, what if it falls against a rock? What if it falls down into a ravine? Will it be able to continue to be used? So just for um, safety purposes, where the hell are my goggles? Sorry, my workbench is a mess. For safety purposes, we are gonna wear these uh, safety glasses. I know they look kind of goofy, but you know, rather better than losing an eye. And we are going to uh, drop the knife. Uh, so I'm about five feet eleven inches tall, so we're going to place it just a little above me at around six feet. So uh, when you know that that's a pretty high height, right? Okay, so first, let's listen. Fuck listening. Feel that, yeah. The bolsters are definitely getting loose. There is some slight rattling at the bolster area. And it is getting really rough at the back bolster here. It's becoming kind of jagged. I'm getting kind of jagged down there. The pins are definitely moving around there. The grips are not cracked yet. And the blade, it, I don't think it's, it might be bent yet. I don't think it is. If it is, it's very little. But let's just say that this is definitely starting to um, finish itself off. It's on its last legs. But we're going to keep testing it until we cannot safely use it. That's the point of this video. Because even if you only had this in the wild, this is better than nothing. This can still baton. This can still make fire shavings. And you can still use it for defensive purposes against wildlife if you have to. So, I mean, this isn't done. We're going to be testing this knife until we cannot safely or comfortably use it anymore. And like I said, we are going to do a throw test. Now, I'm not looking to get the knife in the wall. This is going to see if it can hold up being hucked against, against something. So let's say you're hunting, and let's say you are good at knife throwing, and you're trying to spear a, a squirrel, you know, because you need to eat. You're surviving in the middle of nowhere. Let's say you missed a squirrel and it hits a tree. Is it going to be broken? Or, what I like to think, what if it's a zombie apocalypse, right? Like The Walking Dead, which is kind of cool, I guess. And you're trying to hit a zombie, but you miss, right? Just fantasy, but nonetheless, like, still kind of a cool idea. So we're our, we are going to turn the phone up here. Okay, so we are going to aim at the wall back here. And I'm going to pick it up, I'm going to see if anything's wrong. Here we go. Okay. So, what are we looking at? So, the grip and the bolster are definitely getting more rough and the grip on the left side here does feel a little loose. Hold on. Yeah, there is definitely something rattling on it now. And it is definitely getting looser. But did it survive? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, the grip's still on there, the blade's still on there, the blade ain't falling off. This probably could still be used, so that's a good sign. So there you go, guys. That's today's video of day six of the Mossy Oak Bowie Knife Test. Tomorrow we will move on to day seven, so stay tuned for that. I want to apologize in advance though if I do not make a video tomorrow. I've been feeling kind of uh, not myself and sick, so we'll see. But um, yeah, so stay tuned, like, subscribe, leave a nice comment. Have a good night.